Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound and while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra, just follow the sound please. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed One the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, let's take a few minutes for ourselves to be very clear with the, the practice we do. So especially when it comes to ourselves, it is your own responsibility to gain the clarity regarding your conventional level of life. So always you have to remember, spirituality doesn't mean itself going to come to you and take you somewhere to experience kind of like a supernatural things or kind of like a heaven far away from this world. Always, as a human being, you are capable to transform anything to better or worst. That's the bottom line. You are capable, even in this very moment, with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, you are capable to experience that whatever the things or transform it to heaven or hell. How it possible? It according to your conscious decision. It is not what happened to you. The way you accept it can change the entire situation. So then the way you accept it, it's up to you. So then when you are ready to accept anything, sometimes what happens, we have very preconditioned mind from where it comes. It comes from our culture, tradition, believing this system or the religions or the, the schooling system or whatever we used to new sometimes decide the future of our life. So then it is not a life then. So the life, the very nature of life always you have to remember the very nature of life you should experience the newness without having any boundaries, without having any, any limitations without having any barriers, without having any resistance. And that is why you have the freedom. But when it comes to our life, in this very conventional life, the very nature of it, it always condition 
by our believing and following systems. Of course, it conditioned by the nature, but beyond that, it conditioned by our mind create the, the way of life for us. That's why each and everyone's life difference. Because they come from different, different background. So that what background create their foreground. And in between background and foreground, they are developing their, their imagination and they live with that. And today what we call life is that. But when it comes to ourselves, how you can go beyond that barriers? How you can go beyond that layers? Or how you can break that cell and become a more productive person and becoming a more creative person and experience more freedom without having resistance towards anything. For that, today I'm trying to explain a few details for you in day-to-day -day life with your spiritual practice, how you can maximize the capacity of consciousness because you have to work with it. Otherwise, your consciousness, your awareness not going to become sharp itself. It always, just imagine this, we, this, the, we are kind of like a container always receiving things and getting little by little. It's kind of like a storage. You always putting things inside. So then by the time what happened? It gets stuck. This is what happened to us with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, always putting informations. Now there are a lot of things. And as you know, for whatever the these material things, just imagine you have a lot of things and you keep putting in the, on the top of that and you're putting another thing. So like that after a few years, what happens? Even you take that all out, you see there are a lot of unnecessary dusty things. So then maybe today you are not ready to throw it away. Keep it. Go to your closet and look at around you, your room, and see there are a lot of things you think, oh, this is very important for me. Keep it. It's going to be there. You will never touch it. And then by the time we think another one year, two years, you will throw it away. But today you can't do it. So for our mind, the same then. So then always remember, work with your mind and work with your own consciousness, work with your own life will help you to clean up this all. So meditation is a one thing, get clean ourselves. No one can do it for you. For a house, you know, this outside things, gardeners come for a house, cleaners can come and do that. And you can hire people. But for life, don't do that mistake. Because whatever you hire, you know what happens? They're going to bring something and put inside you. <laughs> you know, you will never get anything out of you using other people. Whoever you use, they're going to leave you something. So that's why this is, you have to do it by yourself. You know, sometimes we say, you know, when people need to perform themselves, sometimes people say, take care of yourself. You know, enjoy yourself. So like that, so because sometimes like, just imagine like a boxing game. You know, you go to the middle of the ring just by yourself. 
You have to survive yourself. So like that, in life, sometimes you have to remember, you have to put the attention and you have to take care of yourself, especially taking out a lot of unnecessary things. So for that, this, will, this information will help you. So there are six steps that you have to develop in your life, in this conventional life, using the conventional world to uplift your spirituality. How you can do that? So the, the, the way you maintain your conventional life by the time going to become your spirituality. Remember that. Another way, the way you maintain your physical and material is your spirituality. So for that then, the very first thing you have to have a vision. It's kind of like when you come to world. There are a lot of things around the world. And sometimes we we like to follow. When you f start to follow things, what happens? We start to lose our true nature. Because you always, you, you always try to become like that. And then unknowingly that you become very limited. You build up a kind of like a prison to yourself. But how about when it comes to you, you are a brand new person. You are not a follower of anybody, but you are a very brand new person. You come with the very newness in you. So then you have more freedom. You have more space. You can come with when anything with your skills. So then always remember, look around you, even though you don't see. I'll give you something, write it down somewhere and you can later look. Look very carefully, then you will recognize you are a part of something or somebody. Don't do that. Don't be a part of something or somebody. It's a kind of like, uh, it, it, we are the one who did that. Knowingly or unknowingly. With our permission or without our permission. Consciously or unconsciously. We are the one who did that. Now you are part of hmm, something or somebody. And how you can check that? Try to take a very independent decision. And uh, when it comes to that, you will see always there are barriers come with the, the peoples and relationships or the positions that you carry already within you. So in itself, you can't avoid that. It's just not a kind of like a surface level of connection. It's, you can't just uh, unplug it. It's keep coming. Maybe you will escape to somewhere, but it still start to keep coming towards you. They, maybe you, you can escape from your family, but they start to keep searching. And then you maybe come to the table and tell, okay, I'm done with everybody. Don't, don't look at me anymore. You know, I want to be free and maybe you, you will disappear, but you can't. They will keep come behind you. So you are the one who put in you into that position. And there are things also. Keep coming. Another way we can call it as a habit. 
And so, but when it comes to vision, don't be a part of something or somebody, then it is not a vision. Always you have to have the very organic level of newness. Bring that independence, freedom within yourself, in, within your consciousness when you take decision. That's how the world nourish every day with the good things. But sometimes we don't see that. So then yourself, it is your responsibility. Contribute some new things to this humanity. Don't complain. We are, we are so smart to complain always to, to whatever the negative things. But you have to remember, you you also capable. You are also capable to contribute something to this humanity. So what you are going to contribute when you leave this place? As a person, whoever you are, what you are contributing while you're living here. So bring something new. That is That should be your vision. And that is one thing. And other one is the identity. So the first one is the vision. The second one is identity. Who I am. And what is the mental image that you carry with, regarding yourself? When there, is, there are situations come, how you introduce yourself? What is the true identity that you have? What the identity, another thing is here, if we go a little bit deeper, identity means match with something. Match with something and then it become you. Like you go with the identity card and then you give it to somebody and they look at it and it look, look at you and then if that match together and accept it. If otherwise, say, this is not you. So identity mean what? That. So then look around the world and see what is match with you. There, as example, if you're stealing and that kind of thing's going to match with you, so that becomes your identity. If you become gener if you are a generous person and all the generous activities around the world are going to match with you, so that's going to define your identity. So if, if you are a liar and all that kind of activities around the world are going to match with you. It's, it's not you are selecting it unconsciously. Even maybe you are not, you are, you don't know you will be there. So that's example. If you are lying, if you like to lie, if you like to criticize somebody, if you carry that kind of nature in you, maybe just imagine you're watching TV and uh, there is a politician come, new politician come and he really explain that try to introduce his vision to the world. But deeply, he lying. But no one can track it. No one can see he's lying. But he knows he's lying. So what happened? You are watching that. And there are may, many other, you know, party leaders come and tell things. And uh, maybe somebody come and tell truth. Uh, honestly, you know, try to give some information, about, but you deeply get connected with the, the leader that who lie. And you like it. Because why? 
that is what you match you it's match to your identity that's where you become like that that your inner deeper qualities remember invisibly the, you it is the, it's become part of your universe so it is the, it's kind of like a deeper language your character is a kind of like a, the the language to the universe that's how it is speak to the all this energy so then always in your mind you can do it so whatever you do but in your mind you always have good thoughts how about that by the time what will happen you are always going to match with the all the good things around you how about all the day and night each and every moment you always think may all living beings be well and happy and now you always think about loving kindness generosity compassion and you always think about all the good qualities in life you can do that thinking it doesn't take any money why you always have to think about the anger jealousy hatred why you giving a space for that maybe no one around you you are lying down somewhere maybe you sitting on the couch or maybe you know you doing something why you think about why you allowing your mind to have any kind of greed hatred or the delusion why you you know maybe that some somebody did something many many years ago that person no, not around you maybe why you keep thinking about that person why you blaming to that people in inside your mind why you hating to people inside your mind why you go always can't have your mind as a beautiful garden with the, all the good thoughts and with the good qualities all the profitable qualities you can have so that is you developing you creating identity so then why by the time what happens everywhere you go that all the good things start to match with you you no need to select anything by with the effort so you just imagine you are you cheating to people okay so then you going to buy something and you going to buy something and then there are three product you know so this one you know genuine person you know with the genuine effort uh, they did that and it is there on the table and this one also genuine person you know and put the effort and did it and this one this guy he was cheating you know doing thing make it not going to work you know properly maybe by the time uh, you know very soon it going to break down he's cheating he do because ordinary people don't know the principle about making a cup you and me don't know what are what are the necessary requirement for this maybe someone can cheat about this maybe if we put a you know a full cup of water maybe the handle break not in right qualities so this guy cheat this is very authentic this is honest and these three things here and you going to now you are also cheating to people this is the very deeper level of uh, identity so this is what happened to you you use your all the skills and you try to you, and that you going to end up buying this cup you not going to be with this you not going to be with this that is that is why you are a part of universe why because what you carry going to right away maybe you start to think oh this is so good this is so beautiful but this guy cheat you can't see it because you also cheating when you have the same nature it become the same you are not going to see it's kind of like something but this one you don't like 
This one you don't like. This is what happened. That's why your identity is very important. Check it. Wherever you go, you know, when you enter to something, the most of time what they do, they check your identity. It's just not only for a security purpose. It helps you to have the authenticity. So then deeply recognize yourself, who you are, what you carry within yourself. Know thyself. You know better yourself. Why? Because otherwise you're going to end up being around the same like you. Go your life going to become a mess. If you don't have very clear understanding, if you don't see the, the idea. So then what you have to do? As a human being, you are capable to change your identity. You are capable to do that. You can have a very brand new life to yourself. How? Take a conscious decision. And find a new path to yourself. And look yourself. Look your own past and see what happened. You don't want to repeat that. Then start a new something new. So that way. This is the, the human life is the best place for you to. To change anything. And start a very new brand new method. So you are now capable to, to have a kind of like a very model. Design yourself. You can have a very new blueprint to your own life. With the, all the good qualities. Profitable qualities. Without greed, hatred and the delusion. Jealousy, ignorance. You can have a very good brand new DNA from here to forward. Loving kindness, generosity, compassion, wisdom, empathy. So you know what are the good qualities. Practice. Always think about it. Don't allow anything to tackle your mind with the greed, hatred and the delusion. Always purify yourself. Once you see it, let it go and bring all the good things, good things, good things. Think about the good for you. It's going to become your identity. So by the time who you are, it's not what are whatever the, the certificate you got, whatever the diplomas you've done, whatever the universities the, or the schools you went, it's not going, it's, it's really who you are. It's going to Bring your identity. So have a new identity. So first one is the vision. And then the second one is identity. And the third one is values and belief. So when it comes to that, values and belief, what is important for you? What is important for you? It's different person to person. Look at yourself. Maybe you throw something away. You think it is not important for you. And like uh, when the, before the, you know, this trash going to take and look in the evening sometimes. Some people come and open the trash can and start to take things from me. So, Whatever not important for you may be very important for somebody else. So then when it comes to you, don't think it because of that or because of that. No. When it comes to you, what is really important for you? Have a very clear idea about it. You may change it in the future. It is okay. But for now, have a very clear idea of what is important for you. And always merge your day-to-day -day life with that. What is major for you? And be with it. Don't, don't try to fight with the minor things or the negative things. Always you... 
practice whatever important for you, then by the time all the minor things will disappear. But most of the time we don't understand what is important to us. We are always fighting with unnecessary things. It doesn't make any change. So that's why I always remember. Be very clear with the, the values of, or the, and the belief of your life. What is important for you? And the fourth one, capabilities. Especially what and how will I learn things? How I develop myself? What is How I gain more profitable skills to me? So look into that. And look to yourself. What are the capabilities? And sometimes you recognize, oh, I can't do that. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Maybe for the moment you have no wisdom how to do it. So once you know if you can't do it, you, you learn it. So just imagine, just know. You know, when I came to California here, I didn't know how to drive, but no choice. So that doesn't, from the beginning, I never, I, I, I didn't understand, you know, how to, how to drive. And I thought when people drive, I was thinking, how they do that? I can't do it. But when there is a situation come for you to no choice, you have to do it, you learn it. And once you learn it, you know how to do it. So then sometimes for us to learn things or do things, you know, whenever, because sometimes our life too good for us. Because of that, you don't, you don't get best out of you. When your life go into very, the very bottom level, when the worst things happen to you, and maybe you wake up and you do all your skills and everything, whatever, you are ready to, to survive. Why you wait till the worst thing happen to you to get your best? Why you can't when the, the good things happen, why you can't get your best? That is our inner ignorance. So that's why capacities. Develop your capacities while you are good in something. Don't be, be limited to that. Don't settle down there. Move forward. Move forward. So through practicing meditation, developing the same skill, because what you experience in this very moment, not the real you, there are more deeper things you can experience. So then by practicing, you develop it. So then look into what are the capabilities around you and don't be really limited. And if you decide yourself, you can become whatever you want. That is the power of mind. Nothing, not miracles. It's the power of mind. Another one is the behavior. So when it comes to behavior, always you have to look. Rather than doing the same thing, rather than following the same like others, what will I do differently? What you can do by yourself, breaking down the sameness. So sameness is a kind of like a disease. So that's why the newness is the antidote for the sameness. Don't get hooked with this sameness. Stuck with the same. Don't get stuck with the sameness. Merge with the newness. And you are always have the abilities, capabilities. Develop your flexibility, adaptivity. 
So to practicing meditation means you develop that skill. So then moderate your life. And moderate your the way of living. And by the time you will see your behavior become more, more, more profitable. Another one is the sixth one is environment. When and where I am, recognize it. Maybe you can't change it, but important thing is when you recognize when and where you are, rather than trying to change it, get the best out of it. That is a different level of a skill. You have to be smart. So sometimes what we try, we always complain about the timing. We always thinking about, dreaming about, change it. This has changed everything around us. You can't do it. So look at this timing when it comes to human history. And look at where you are. Maybe you still never recognize the value of the place where you are. There are a lot of good things. Look into that. Tap into that. And the win, that is very important. When it comes to human history, look at that uh, from, from that to today. We are in the kind, we are the, the latest. You are better than the Alexander the Great. You are better than the Genghis Khan. You are better than the Caesar. You are better than the King Asoka. Why? Because they all dead. They all gone. But you are the one who live today in the moment and experiencing this all. So then your time is the most important time when it comes to this entire human history. And then look at the outside world. More than any other time, we are capable to experience a lot of things in the world. You know, there was a time in the history. From country to country, when people travel, it is only one way journey, one time in their lifetime. They say bye to, you know, their relatives and they give up everything and they go and months, it takes years to maybe go to other country. And sometimes disease. You know, the, the people never didn't understand how things happen and they, they were worshipping darkness. They never knew how the rain happened, how this, uh, you know, the rainbows happen, how the thunder happens, and the, the dark cloud. People never knew that things. People used to worship that things. People used to kill animals, kill people when the thunder happens to, to keep it uh, kind of like the environment safe. So it's kind of like the, the goat get mad and now you have to kill someone and offer. And then the, when the cloud disappeared, they thought, oh, our offering work. They're like that crazy things people used to do. Today we can say it like a crazy things, but that time, that was the wisdom. And then just imagine in kind of like uh, if you used to live during the First World War and the Second World War. How, how, what kind of situation you go through? And then how about the Hitler came behind you and put you into a gas container? How about that? We have to understand our ancestors went through that. People went through that. How about the people that like hunter-gatherer time period? Always, whoever strong person go and kill others, 
get whatever they want. But look at today the world, the timing, where you are and when. You have to appreciate and this is it's kind of like when you come to entire human history, if you see the timeline, if you see the human history, you will see you are living in the heaven. Because our history, this the earth itself is kind of like a hell used to be. People, you know, some people hang on the road and shooting to them. Some other people used to touch their gun and slavery, you know, it's kind of like a dark time in the human history. But today, it's, it's, it's not like that. It's totally different. But using this all, because this all came so long journey to, to, to give this opportunity for you. And this light, these computers, internet, the chair you sitting, the environment, heating system, this all the, the neighborhood, this environment, the plumbing system, and this, this everything came so long journey to be here like this today. It didn't happen, didn't happen overnight. So then your responsibility is get the best out of it and be the best of you and save the best to others with the love and the devotion. Don't, don't look to anything else. Get the best out of this soul because this is the best that you have. And be the best to yourself. And then there is no worry, disappointment, unhappiness, sadness, fear. And give the best to whoever around you. Without holding anything, without any greediness. Give the best. Having and holding to love and the, the faith and the devotion. And then you will see. that you, you, you start to experience deeply the transformation in you. So with that, let's get into practice. So remember the, this all the, uh, six principles, vision, identity, value, capabilities, behavior, and environment. So with that, Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say so pateva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. 
And when it happens through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra. Your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. And settle down with the breathing.
Bring attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world. Around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, the stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Din Suva, pray low strong. Tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. your backside, to your left side, and to your right side. Downward, and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma patipatiya buddham pujemi dhamman pujemi sangham pujemi Adaya imaya patipatiya jati jaravya dimaranam ha paribunjisami idam me punya kamanga savakaya vahang ha tu sabadukka pamunchatu. Bless you.